Hello friends. Welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. Today we're going to be doing a Christmas stocking, a patchwork Christmas stocking. And this is where you get to use your own imagination. The only thing you're going to need for today's project is a stocking template of some sort. You can draw your own or I will put this one with a pattern in my Etsy shop. Um, and by the way, if I, you ever don't see a pattern in my Etsy shop that you uh, are wanting, just send me a message and I'll get it put together. I'm, I'm behind on patterns. Uh, they take longer than making a video to put together. So I'm trying to just mainly put up the ones that I think will be the most popular. So uh, if you see something and I don't have a pattern, I'll put the pattern together for you if you want it. Okay, so we'll need some sort of stocking template. And I, I drew this one myself. I like my stockings pretty big so that you can actually put something in them. So it's a pretty wide one. And for my stocking, you're going to need two, I mean, four pieces of a foundation fabric. I'm just using a plain white muslin here. And uh, mine need to be 11 inches wide by 17 inches tall. Our stocking is really 10 inches wide by 16 inches tall. And I just allowed an extra inch for shrinkage when we quilt it. Then you'll need two pieces of batting the same size. And a pile of scraps in whatever color choices you want your stocking to be. I'm just going to use scraps from all the other decorations we've been making so that everything coordinates. Okay, the first thing we need to do, we're just going to lay our pattern aside, but we're going to take two of our foundation pieces and one of our batting pieces. Uh-oh, I had to cut this apart. Where's my scissors? Okay, and we're going to sandwich them with the batting in the middle. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my, uh, oh, that's bug spray, that's not what I'm going to use. I'm going to use my uh, 505 Temporary Adhesive. I think there's other good brands of this, too. This is just the only one I've used. And I am going to lightly spray it. So that I don't have to use a lot of pens. You can choose to use pins or uh, anything like that will hold it in place, but you just don't want it moving around a lot. Once again, do not use too much of this spray. If it's concentrated in one place, it can gum up your needles. And if you have overspray, it gets on everything. So that's my caution for using it. But otherwise, it really holds things together good. Now, what we're going to do is just make a patchwork out of this whole entire piece of fabric. Then we will come back and cut out our uh, stocking from that. So I'm going to just start with a piece in the middle. And the thing about your starting piece is you want it 
to be five-sided if possible. That will give you a lot more interest to your uh, quilting. So I'm going to just stick this piece right in the middle. I am going to pin it down just to kind of hold it in place. Then I'm going to find another piece. And I'm going to put it along this side. And then I'll trim it to just the length of that one side. So I am going to put it right sides together and just kind of loosely line up the edges. You want to make sure you get get it at the lowest point. So I'm going to pin this here and here. Then I'm going to take it over to my sh machine and put a, uh, just a line of stitching. You can make your seam allowance whatever width you want. It's not going to matter as long as it's consistent down this one piece. I'll probably use about a quarter inch. So let's do that and then I'll explain the next step. Now that I've sewn that seam, I'm going to open it up and kind of give it a finger press. And then I'm just going to cut it basically at the same angle as this line. And our cuts don't have to be that neat because we're going to be putting a, another piece of fabric on top of it. Okay. Now let's find a different print. A lot of mine are in strips, unfortunately, but I'll, I can cut them up into any size I want. But I'm gonna go ahead and use a strip here, and I'm gonna make sure it's long enough to go on this side. And I'm gonna work in a circle. And I'll do a couple of pieces, and then I'll just take the whole pile over to the sewing machine and you can watch me finish it. I'm gonna go ahead and pin it down, but you want it to be long enough to get both of these strips. I'm going to unpin it, open it out, and extend this line. Finger press it down just with the edge of your fingernails. And uh, then let's pick another piece to, and I'm going to pick one or I'm gonna cut one, see if that'll be long enough. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut it a little more like this so it's long enough. Okay, that'll be long enough for this edge. So I'm going to go sew it and flip it back open. Then I'll find something to go on this edge, and we're just gonna work it all the way around using different scraps. So I'm gonna take all this to the sewing machine, and you can just watch me as I uh, cut up and stitch on different scraps so uh, we're not jumping back and forth and it'll, it'll go faster.
Now this time on this one, I accidentally cut it like this and I should have cut it straight. So we're gonna have to move our fabric back enough to get it, but that's okay. Just gives it more character. just barely got that I'll have to I think I'm gonna take just a little bit wider seam allowance so I can catch all of the black yeah that's what I wanted bowed in the middle, so I'm going to fix that. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Now I want to make sure I line this up with the shortest piece. That's the mistake I made on that black piece while ago. So, And you also really don't want to go past, like I went a little past here so I've got extra sticking out here, but you don't want to go past your previous fabric. I mean, it doesn't hurt if you do, it just uh, takes more fabric.
Remember to always keep your seam straight, even if it means cutting off some of your fabric. Okay, let's go back over to the cutting table and see where to go next. Okay, there's there's a few places that I didn't catch, but I don't think we're going to need those. If we do, I'll go back and sew some more on here. But I want to steam it real good. Then I'm going to turn it over and trim off all the extra, but I'm going to save those. Those may be good scraps for another stocking. Good scissors here. Okay, now we can decide whether we want it like this or like this. And I'm going to lay my pattern on it. Now, you can either have your stocking go this way or you can have it go this way. And I'm not going to decide that right now. What I'm going to do next is do the other side. Now you wouldn't have to do this on the other side. You could use some plain fabric, but it would need to be quilted anyway, and this quilts it as you go, so why not make it just as pretty? So I'm gonna sandwich this in, 
and we'll find a good five-sided piece to start with. And then I'll let you watch me do this in fast motion since you've already seen it once, but uh, you can see how I choose different pieces if that helps you at all. Let's start with a different color this time. Okay, here's part of our Christmas tree that we cut off when we did the placemats. And so, see, that's one, two. I'm going to do three, four. Five. There's a five-sided piece. One, two, three. No, that's a four-sided. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's five. So I'm going to start with a silver one in the middle. And it already has some seams, but that just gives it more character. And then I'm going to start with this one. And... I'll just put the camera on fast speed and you can watch me sew this one. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off so it's not in my way. Okay. Now I've got this one sewn, so I'm going to steam it real good and make sure everything's laying nice and smooth. Flip it over and trim off the excess.
Now, for the uh, purpose of this video, I use pretty big scraps because I wanted it to go fast. However, it's really cute if you use real small scraps doing this. And some of them in the center are small. Now, I don't care which is the front and which is the back. They both look pretty similar. So I am just going to lay one on top of the other because I like to cut mine out at the same time so they're shaped exactly the same. And this is just barely big enough. So it did shrink, which with quilting, they will shrink. So you might even want to make yours an inch bigger than I did. So if you were using my pattern, you go to 12 by, what was it? If I said 12 by 18, and then you'd be sure to have plenty. I mean, I'm gonna have enough here, but it's gonna be close. Now, you notice I put wrong sides together on purpose so that they would both be facing the same way. Otherwise, I mean, they'd be facing, they'll be mirror image of each other so you can put them together. Um, don't do them both going the same direction or they won't, they won't go together. You'll have to make another stocking. I hope I'm getting this centered in the video good enough. My last video, things were getting close to cutting off at the top and I apologize. I want to keep the videos close enough that you can see all the details. And so, that's why I have them so close and it's, sometimes I get off screen. Now, these scraps, you could save them and make something else out of them if you want. I'm not sure if they're big enough to do just a whole lot, but. Okay, I roughly cut it according to the pattern. It should have a stocking shape anyway. And that ended up real nicely there. Okay, now we have uh, a, a several options. Um, and that is uh, for putting our binding on. And we are gonna put a band at the top, so don't worry about this raw edge up here at the moment. But we're going to put a nice light colored strip. I, I suggest either doing very light or very dark uh, because it's easier if you're going to embroidery a name uh, to have it on light or dark. If you have it on medium, you're always fighting to um, find the right color of thread that'll really stick out. Uh, when I used to monogram a lot of towels, I always wanted either really dark towels or really light towels because when I got to those nice blues and, that were medium toned, there wasn't a thread color that really looked good and stood out. Okay, we have several options here. We can put right sides together and sew around, turn it right side out, and be done. That will work perfectly fine, but you're gonna have a raw edge on the inside of your stocking, which is fine. I mean, it's a Christmas stocking. It's not like somebody's gonna wear it. So uh, that's perfectly fine. What I usually do is take it to my serger and serge all the way around. Then I don't really have a raw edge in there, but I, I but I still have a seam on the inside. The other thing you can do 
is take some bias tape. Let me grab some here real quick to show you. Here's some red bias tape that I could use. And what I would do is I'd start on the back, whichever one you deem to be the back. And open it wide, you'd want half inch double fold. Open it wide and stitch down that first fold all the way around. And the reason we want bias tape is because it stretches around curves. And then once that is sewn in place, you can fold it all back in and turn it around to the front. And basically, that's what you'll have. Or you could do a binding like you do on a quilt, like we've done on some placemats, um, like, uh, uh, yeah, just where you have two and a half inch strip, you sew it on one side, you fold it in half, sew it on one side, flip it over and stitch it on the other side. Uh, that works real good, but going around, unless you cut it on the bias, going around curves, it's not going to work as well as a bias tape. So for the sake of simplicity, because I want all of my patterns to be at a beginner level to some extent, I am going to use the method of right sides together. I'm not going to sew it on my serger machine because not all of you have a serger machine. And uh, we'll just do it on regular sewing machine. But you want to get it lined up really good and take, I would take at least a 3 8 inch seam, if not even a half inch seam. Uh, it's just, it's because it's so thick and it can pull apart. So let's do that and then we'll come back and talk about the cuff. Now before I started sewing, I went ahead and pinned it all the way around, especially around the curves and the hem, so it stayed in place and didn't move on me. With this thick fabric, that can happen. Now that we have uh, sewn all the way around, let's turn it right side out. I think first though, I'm gonna clip around the curves with my pinking shears. Now this is a lot for them to cut through, so, and they're getting kind of dull. That isn't gonna work too well. So what I'm gonna do, that would have been best, but I need to get those sharpened. I'm just gonna cut it pretty close, like an eighth of an inch away on the curved parts. Oh, and by the way, when I was sewing the back side of this, I kept hitting the camera 
because my scraps were laying on the other side of the camera and I apologize for that. I'm just a better seamstress than I am videographer. Okay, we have a seam that's falling right here next to our seam, so that's making it a little bit bulkier, but that's hard to avoid. Okay, here is what I think I'm going to use as my front, and I think I'm going to use that as my back. I just kind of like the way this looks a little bit better. I'm going to lay it aside for a minute. And we're going to need a piece of fabric that you want to use for uh, your top that folds over. And mine is 15 and a half by 7 and a half. Now, how you want to uh, figure that out is you want to measure from seam to seam, and mine is right at seven inches, and then you want to add a half inch, and then uh, you always want it um, seven and a half in uh, depth. Now I cut well, I thought I did. <laughs> I'm going to trim this a little more. I cut my piece of batting a half inch smaller. All the way around. It looks like I only did that on the ends. Let's, so I'm going to fix that. And again, this is because I don't like extra bulk in my seams. So I'm going to center this on the back side. I'm going to get my 505 spray. And kind of tack it in place a little bit. Got that too close to one edge. This batting stretches, so no matter how perfect you cut it, it it's it's never perfect when you go to put it on. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is fold it in half this way, take it over the machine, and stitch that seam. Now, I'm going to open it up a little bit and just iron my seam to one side or the other. I didn't really need that crease, but that's okay. I'll take it out. And then we're going to turn this so that it's folded in half and makes a circle. So this is our cuff. Now, you can either put your seam on one side, or you can center it in the back. I think I'll put mine on uh, one side. That way, until I put a name on it, either side could be used. Now, if you want to uh, embroidery a name on it, you can do it before you put the batting in there, you can do it after. Um, actually, that batting gives it a lot of um, 
stabilization in an embroidery machine or even with hand embroidery. You can also go to Hobby Lobby and get cut out iron on letters and use those. Um, you, if you have a Cricut or Silhouette machine, you could use that. Whatever method you want to put your name on it. Okay, I am going to stick this inside of my stocking and line up all the raw edges and pin them. And this gets a little bulky, a little awkward, but it, it's not too bad. I'm gonna first pin the side seam. Actually, before I do that, I am going to mark my other side. So, that's my seam. And I've got a crease there, so I know to line that crease up with the other side. Here's my seam. Okay. Line my seams up here. And at the seams, on both sides, it's going to get a little bulky when you're sewing it. Just take your time and go slow. Um, if you have a Jima jig that, that you put under, I don't think I have one here that I could show you um, right now. But uh, it's, it's a little, kind of looks like a fork on both ends and, and you stick it up under your presser foot and it helps you sew through thick, thicker thicknesses. And also the presser foot setting on your machine, some of the older machines have a little screw at the top and you can, it will raise your presser foot so it doesn't push down on it so hard. Um, and it won't bog down as much or if it's an electronic machine there's usually a setting in your menu that you can raise or lower your presser foot now you have to stretch it pretty good when you're sewing it because we've got this stashed inside and it kind of wants to bunch up so just stretch it while you're sewing it and it helps to stretch it and, and get it pinned as many places as possible before you go to the machine. Then you're only stretching small pieces at a time. And this time, I'm gonna take about a half inch seam. And that's just because all my seams seem a little bit un uneven. Let me just try to even them a little more. That would probably be the best thing. Okay, I'm going to take it over and sew about a half inch seam all the way around. Now that we've sewn that, we pull it out and turn it down. And then give it a good iron. Now, the only thing we have left to do is to uh, make a little hanger. And I think I'll make mine out of the 
same fabric and I usually for pot holders I usually do about four inches I think I'm gonna do five inches on this because I've had um, hangers for stockings that set on your mantle that are kind of bulky and um, so let's do that let's do it about an inch uh, let's do it two inches wide two inches by five Okay, we're going to do it just like we do for a pot holder or a purse strap. Uh, we're going to fold it into the center. So I'll kind of mark my center, fold it in that way, fold it in this way, and iron it. Then I'm going to fold it in half again. I'm going to take it off the machine and top stitch it or edge stitch it there. Then I'll put right sides together, which it doesn't matter which way's right on this. And so about an eighth inch seam so I can turn it right side out and stitch it again here when I put it down and then that seam will not show. Now that I've sewn my little loop, I've got the uh, wrong side of the seam on the inside. I'm going to place it here, wherever you want it, right there towards the edge. And I'm going to come up here and avoid that seam because that's too thick. And just sew back and forth across there two or three times. Okay, I changed my mind. I don't want to sew through all the thicknesses, so I opened this cuff back up once I decided where I wanted it. And I'm just going to sew through the cuff, not through the cuff and the stocking both. Okay. Okay, you can see how it's sewn on, and I only sewed through the cuff part. I didn't try to sew through all those thicknesses, so I just opened it back out to sew it in place. Now we have our Christmas stocking. Let's turn this over on a plain white side with lots of threads on it. And I hope you can see that. Okay, one other thing I didn't mention is if you have a machine that has decorative stitches, once you're through quilting it, before you start putting the stocking together, if you'll come back with your machine and do some decorative stitches, 
either right on the seam or on the inside of the seam, however you want to do it. Uh, that is so pretty, and it's reminiscent of a crazy quilt. Uh, the old-time crazy quilts were just, you know, any kind of fabric you had, you put together like this, and then you came back and embroidered, hand embroidered around the seams, and sometimes did embroidery in the middle, and you can do all that on this too, and um, they're gorgeous. So you might look up uh, antique uh uh, crazy quilts. I mean, there's some people that still do all that work, and they're they're absolutely beautiful. I have one I've been working on for years, but I'm only about halfway done with it. So that is something that will add a lot to your stocking too. I have a machine that will do all that, but it's in another room. And for the point of simplicity, it, uh, I just thought that would make the uh, video run too long, but know that you can do that and add a little extra flair. You can even decorate it with buttons, or, you know, anything you want to hand sew on it would be nice. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, that you'll come back again. If you are new to the channel, would you please subscribe? That helps me continue to be able to bring videos to you. And uh, if you're uh, a veteran and have been here before and have already subscribed, if you would like the video or leave me a comment or both, that helps too. I'm trying to uh, satisfy the YouTube algorithms, which is probably an impossible task. But uh, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I look forward to bringing you something else next time. I think this is all of the Christmas decor I'm going to cover right now. I have some other things we could make, but I think I'll save them for next Christmas. And um, we're going to start a series now of just uh, easy gifts to make uh, for Christmas. And uh, I haven't decided exactly which one we're going to do first, but I have a long list of things, uh, hopefully that are different than all the other videos on the internet. Okay, thank you. And remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord.